In 1961, a civil rights group known as CORE founded the Freedom Riders. In one of the era's final acts of protest, they traveled the South by bus in order to defy segregation. Upon arriving in Jackson, Mississippi, they encountered brutality, indignation, and imprisonment. In an attempt to hold their officers accountable, they sought judicial relief through the KKK Act. And in response, this government birthed qualified immunity. That takes us to today. As America chants say their name seeking the same relief that the Freedom Riders fought for, all we've met them with is silence. Principally, pass this legislation to reform police training in America. The National Conference of State Legislators writes on August 22nd of 2022 that only 11 states require police to learn the various forms of de-escalation training, meaning in the other 39 states, there are no accountability methods to ensure that the right techniques are taught. Yet in half of the 8,514 fatal police shootings, the subject of arrest never possessed a firearm, unarmed in half of shootings. We need accountability, and today's legislation delivers that. Senator Stevens and Senator Wilkins, you tell us it does nothing. This removes a legal protection, meaning there's more accountability. As the Institute of Justice found on January 23rd of 2022, the removal of qualified immunity would raise liability to the point where departments would be forced to embrace de-escalation techniques. That's why the Washington Post wrote in June 23rd of 2021 that when the NYPD lost their qualified immunity, it only took them two months to establish de-escalation techniques. The only question left in this debate is, does this training work? Yes, it does. First, it holds officers and protects them. As the American Psychological Association writes on October 1st of 2020, the training I mentioned earlier in Las Vegas reduced officer injuries by 11%. As the DOJ found in September 6th of 2022 in Louisville, it reduced officer injuries by 36%. The best of us choose to serve and protect us. Today, let the best of us serve and protect them. Secondly, it protects the community. That same APA report found that the de-escalation training led to safer community interactions. In Las Vegas, the use of force dropped by 23%, in Louisville by 26%, and in Seattle by 40%. Behind every statistic is a story. Don't let anyone's be cut short. Say their name. By passing, we can finally require every department and this government to acknowledge them with action or go with Senator Stevens' plan, strike down this legislation and give them the same response that we've issued for generations. That silence.